Hey guys, today I'm doing a little bit of a stelter in a public day use area. Now this by all rights, in my opinion, should be a campground. And it actually looks like it was at some point. There may have been a, a booth here, a registration booth, something like that. But there's a vehicle coming, so I'm gonna get out of the way. We're gonna check this park out a little bit. When I drove in here today, I'm gonna figure out how to leave the vehicle here overnight. So let's go. All right. Beautiful, beautiful park. We're coming down some walking trails here with what look to be campsites. And it looks like, looks like this was actually a walk-in campground at, at some point. There are some people having a nice group picnic over there. And I can walk right down here to the lake. And there's a little boat launch Somebody just sent me a message. Oh, it's a crazy neighbor. <laughs> Sorry, I'll shut the phone off. Now I can see these maintenance trails that they have here. They come right through like so. And all along here, there are little campsite-y things. So it is my suspicion that this used to be, in fact, a free county sort of campground. They may have had trouble with bush parties, etc. So, unfortunately, it's turned into a day use area. You know, you can see there's some picnic tables, there's some fire rings, that type of thing. Now, I don't know what it would cost them to actually turn this into a campground. In fact, I think they'd make a little more money than as a day use area. This is completely free to use during the daytime. And, you know, such a beautifully maintained place. They got garbage cans, they have toilets. The only thing they'd have to lose by uh, turning it into a campground is uh, getting 20 or $30 a night or whatever they charged. So, I'm gonna sit down under this beautiful tree in full bloom here and that I think calls for step two, right by the lake. Because step one was finding the old accesses and what I'm sure was a campground. So let's sit down here under this tree. Oh, that's not in bloom, that's poplar fuzz. Okay, good thing I'm not allergic. Step two today is scotch. Because it's easier to carry in than beer, that's for sure. And it is so smooth. Mmm, that's smooth, yeah. There's a few pieces of uh, firewood here. I'll try to find some more. And it's a little windy today. I hope that doesn't interfere with the uh, sound too much because uh, I'm filming on Wednesday. I managed to get a day off here. So happy Wednesday, uh, a day late. It's Thursday now. But I'm gonna stay away from those other groups of people. Uh, since I've exploded on YouTube a little bit or gained a lot more popularity since last summer, I do tend to get recognized a little bit. And if somebody sees me in a public day use park, the backpack and the camera, I think the jig will be up. They're gonna know exactly what I'm up to. So I'm gonna, I can, I can be here just fine, having a little fire, I shouldn't really have the whiskey with me, scotch, but it's a gray area. They're starting to make it more legal in day use areas because they've noticed everybody does it anyways. So find some more firewood, get set up right here as if I'm just a normal guy, enjoying the nature, taking some wild wildlife shots, which I am. So it's gonna be good Look for a little more firewood. A free wood pile, hard to believe. And I'm gonna move the site over a little closer because it's a lot to carry. And I've gotten out of shape lately. I have to get back into shape. I was gonna cycle out here. And that's like a couple hour cycle trip. And it used to be no problem. In fact, about eight years ago, I did an 800 mile or 1200 kilometer cycle tour from Victoria to BC to Edmonton, Alberta. And I did 60 miles or 100K a day, no problem. Except when I tried to come out here yesterday, I got about a half an hour in, I said, okay, 
that's a project for another day as I slowly get a little more into shape, ease down on the step twos a little bit, and just generally do as much more physical exercise as I can. So I'm gonna scoop up a bunch of this wood and get it over quickly before somebody else grabs this and set up and just act like I'd be long here. This fire pit I'm not going to cook on. It is way too deep. They've cleaned it out and if I get any flames to the top this fire would have to be huge in order for that to happen. I do have a little cooking stove which is a little more reliable on the heat, a little more controllable. So we'll save the fire for a little bit when the mosquitoes get bad and that'll flush them out nicely. Oh yeah. Doesn't get a lot better than this. So we've secured a little wood. I don't think there's anybody coming by this site. I picked a non-weekend to come out here so things should die off pretty quick. It's a school night. And this is what all the fuss is about this park. There's a little lake here which is probably good for fish. Now I don't have my fishing license quite yet for this year. Otherwise I'd probably fish from the pier somewhere if I could. But I will be doing some fishing in the future. And not a huge lake, but a good lake. Looks quite nice. She couldn't be a day use without the swing sets. So depending on my mood, I may indulge later. As some people know, that is my guilty pleasure. I do enjoy a good swing after a few step twos. Onward we go. Finders keepers. This will burn good. Oh well. Can't leave this here. Okay, good stuff. The mosquitoes are coming out though. So I'm gonna use this Thermosel mosquito repellent. I've had good luck with it. Not everybody has, but for me, it has really done the job. Super easy to use. It's just another Another toolkit in the drawer dealing with these blood suckers. And throw in a fresh butane cartridge. And when this starts smoking, it should clear the air pretty quickly of any of these pesky critters. Pull some stuff out and make it look like I'm just here for a little barbecue. Fresh butane cartridge for the thermosel. Okay. Not a moment too soon. I am getting eaten alive. Oh yeah, there we go. That should do. It doesn't work really well if there's a ton of wind. But then if there's a ton of wind, there's not usually a ton of skeeters. So, got stuff I need out for a nice little meal here. I just grabbed my regular to-go bag. I've got a little, little candle I can put out here, make it look like a really pathetic uh, picnic for one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'll just sadly sit here and <laughs> sip, my, uh, sip my scotch by myself with a candle going. Uh, while, while the good families all play frisbee and stuff. But that's just fine with me. Keep this on down low. Better start a little... a little fire so I don't creep everybody out here sitting by myself with a camera. Make it look a little... a little more normal what I'm doing. All right. 
right. Hey, this stuff's not just for the barbecue. Believe it or not, I still enjoy using a charcoal barbecue. Adds to the flavor, I find. There we go. This is the ultra low potency stuff. It doesn't go like, whoa. They call it concentrated and actually in their instructions they recommend once it's burning that you give it another squirt carefully. I don't know, something I just, I'm not even gonna do that even though it says in the instructions because I've just been raised to not put any accelerant onto an already burning fire. And I do enough risky things as it is. I don't need to compound problems here. Getting out of cell service. That should do. Kids playing in the park. This guy throwing football around with his kid right now. And I'm just here like, I wanna hunker down. So it shouldn't be too long until they all leave. And I can more actively look for a place to set up the hammock without looking like a total creep. So I'm gonna throw a little more wood on the fire. Play the waiting game. It looks like they're getting close to packing up. And that should mean a day use park to myself for some evening use. I can, uh, yeah, get set up quite nicely here. And I think what I'm gonna do is just put a note on my car that says I've lost the keys or uh, something like that. You know, car won't start, I've lost the keys, we'll get the car in the morning. That's, that should be good. No valuables inside or something. Just leave that on the windshield. And hopefully, in the morning, the car's still there. Because if they start to tow it at night, if I stumble out of the woods, Frantically, they're gonna, the jig will be up. So, throw a little more wood on here. And we play the waiting game. The family has seemed to move along. So I'm gonna cook quickly. I'm not putting any more wood on the fire because if it starts to get close to 10, 11, when I shouldn't be here, if they see me with a big fire, they're gonna know something's not right. I brought a little butane stove with me. You know, it's just too unpredictable to try and cook on that. And for bringing this little tiny thing, saving the bottom of the pot, I have heard some good uh, good tips from a lot of people that you coat the bottom in just soap, and that'll stop it from getting all, all sooty and horrible. But today, start with browning up a little chicken with some olive oil. garbage can right there. That's awesome. Okay. It's fried up. This is a variant on a different recipe I normally do as a casserole. And essentially you've got Chicken, chicken chunks, stove top, dried stuffing mix, can of mushroom soup. Um, I picked some green beans out of the freezer, but they were pretty freezer burned. So on the way, I just grabbed a bag of mixed vegetables. Usually I use broccoli, but I didn't come across any in my venture out here. Round this up. I've never done it this way in a skillet before, but one pot skillet meals are what camping is all about. With the pulverized chicken morsels, I'll add a little water. I'm adding about a cup right now. I, uh, I refill these little plastic ones at home because they're so light compared with the uh, normal refillable canister. 
and you know they last quite a while you can really beat them up I haven't had an issue so about a cup of water in there and good old cream of mushroom can soup any any creamed canned soup will do it's the universal food binder food band-aid casserole helper bring it with you in your backpack and fortify any meal get this all bound together and while that happens dump in some mixed vegetables could put in broccoli now or whatever you happen to have on hand. Asparagus would be nice. It is in season right now too. I've turned down the heat a little bit on that. To not scorch anything too badly. <clears throat> yeah. Frozen mixed vegetables. I love one pot meals. That is certainly the way to go camping wise. We got our protein, we got copious amounts of fat, we got vegetables, and very quickly, once this reaches a relative boil, we'll add in our starch. And again, yeah, one of the beauties of the day use is all these nice little garbage cans everywhere despite the fact that people really don't seem to use them as much as they could with this thermosel going I really have not seen too many mosquitoes in fact it's pretty well pretty well cleared of them so that's great because this is the hour they like to they like to come to life This looks like stuffing time to me. Mix this all in. Kind of like a stuffing top chicken pot pie or stuffing mixed chicken pot pie. Regardless. It sure. It sure smells good. that amount of water worked out just fine. Oh yeah. I'm gonna take another quick nibble and I'm gonna let this. Mm-hmm. I'll let that solidify a little. Mm. And we'll chow down by the remains of this fire. Day use area dinner for one completed. Actually it's a dinner for more than one as I often do but if I'd actually cycled out here this would be nothing, I'd still be hungry afterwards. So a big shout out to all the people who have donated to the beer fund and all the people who have purchased Hunker Down merchandise. That all helps uh, to get me out here doing this uh, interesting stuff instead of repairing furnaces and all the stuff I don't like doing very much. So big shout out to you guys. And uh, you know, everybody's welcome at my table. And in these times, I'm really hoping that, uh, you know, life is tough enough as it is. We can all just hunker down together and get through this. It'll be a lot better. So, cheers everyone. And... Mm. Mm, that is good. Nice thing with this, you can replace the stove top with noodles, or um, minute rice or regular rice or whatever you'd like but it sure turns out tasting real good I've extinguished the fire and I'm heading back to go check out a spot to set up the hammock this is the beautiful meadow where everyone was camping and throwing footballs around 
just having a really good time. So you can see it, it is beautiful. It looks like it should be a group camp use area. You can see behind here, they have it labeled as a day use park. It is uh, Alberta funded, Alberta government, so it is public land. And this park has seen a lot better days, but it's still <laughs> got a lot of good, good camping potential and day use potential. Well, enough fun and games. Uh, there's still a few people around here. I'm going to move the car over to the far parking lot, slap the note on it that says, um, lost my keys somewhere, please don't tell me, I'll be back in the morning. Hopefully that will suffice, but we'll find out. And mosquitoes are revving up here for the evening. I don't have my thermocell repeller on me, but uh, the birds are chirping like crazy, frogs are ribboning. Found a scrap of paper. Lost keys, no valuables. Back in AM. Please don't tow. Pick that rag there. And then we're going to grab some stuff out of there and go to find a good spot to hunker down. Away we go. I'm not sure if I'm on an old park service trail, what the deal is, but I'm just going to be quickly here for the night. All right, that looks live. The mosquitoes are pretty ferocious, if I do say so myself. And I think those folks we're just leaving as I wandered into the trail here to set up for the night. There we go. These trees are a touch close for this hammock, but Working with minimal, minimal daylight, you have to do what you can without being discovered. Let's adjust this a little more. will do. This will keep the mosquitoes out pretty good. I'm gonna make another run back for the sleeping bag because I don't wanna to carry too much at once. If I'm just casually walking through with one little backpack, way less suspicious than a huge one. So back to the other one. And the hammock is nor norm <laughs> not normally set up this low, but that actually works quite well today because 
a little more out of sight, it blends in okay, and I'm probably 20 meters away from the closest road. I had to do a little little bushwhacking down this trail, but uh, hopefully they're not up and down this trail at 6 in the morning. We'll find out. It sure be nice to have a fire out here, I have to say that. Sadly, not really an option <clears throat> as I'm trying to keep a low profile. And I don't see any really dead trees above me other than maybe the one I tied my hammock onto. But uh, that's one thing you do know on a lookout for before you set up anything, particularly a hammock. Oh no, this one's got a few years left in it still. Yeah, this tree will get me through the night. That's okay. Because, yeah, you don't want to wake up a ghost if a tree squishes you in the night. But I'm going to crawl in here with my step twos. Make sure none of my garbage blows away. And make sure I got my phone with me in case of emergency. And I have cell service, one bar, so excellent. Going to quit being so loud. And hit the hay. I can't really see out of here, but see you guys in the morning. Sweet dreams. Morning guys, that was a cozy night. It was a stressful one, but a cozy one. Uh, people were coming in and out of the park. I'm guessing probably teenagers, people out just bored and exploring, who knows, people like me. But I just put the blinders on, stayed in the tent, stayed quiet, and nobody said anything, nobody came by. Uh, We're gonna get out of here real quick, because I can actually hear them. There's a maintenance vehicle up there. It sounds like they're mowing or something in the park. So I'm gonna take this down real quick. My whiskey courage is gone right now, so no more of this, yeah, let's go stealth camping. Now it's like, okay, let's get out of here, uh, go back home before we get busted. So. All this stuff down. I didn't use uh, an under quilt or a sleeping pad because it's warm enough at this time of year that that's not even an issue and also, uh, this hammock is really comfortable. You're not, it's not like sleeping on the ground or anything. Uh, the only reason you need that in one of these hammocks is just the temperature. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna pack this stuff up. Hammock is certainly the vehicle of choice for any stealthing because it doesn't take up much room. Quick up, quick down, no messing around with tent poles, and uh, 
doubles as a chair, but yeah, my stealthy senses are tingling, so I'm getting out of here. Car is still there. Perfect crime. Just gonna stumble out here. Yep. Note still on it. Car is still there. Nice. All right, I'm gonna get out of here before I push my luck too much further, get it a dodge, so to say. So if you eventually want to see me get caught at one of these, uh, please subscribe because it's bound to happen one day. And uh, when it does, you'll be the first to see it. So thanks for camping with Steve and until next time, uh, hunker down.